Hi there. Now, when you're working with probability tree diagrams, one question that crops up quite often and does cause, I notice, quite a lot of problems is that of conditional probability, where you've got to work out the probability of a one event given that another event has previously occurred. And to demonstrate how you handle problems like this and the formulae that are uh, used, I've got this basic example where if the probability of John taking a bus to work is 0.8 and the probability of taking a bus and being late for work is 0.6, we've got to find the probability of being late for work given that John took the bus. So what I would encourage you to do is a tree diagram, something along these lines where We've got the first trial here is all about the mode of transport that John can either take a bus or not a bus. And then we've got the arrival state where if John took a bus, he could either be late for work or not late for work. And if he didn't take a bus, then he could be late for work or not late for work. So the key to this is to use good notation, as I've stressed in earlier videos. And so for this one, for the mode of transport, we could fill it in as the probability of taking a bus, we're told is 0.8, and the probability of John not taking a bus then must be 0.2. Now, being late for work, or not late for work, is dependent on whether John took a bus or not. Because we're told to find the probability of being late for work given that John took the bus. In other words, that's this probability in here. If we write in the notation, it will be the probability that John is late for work given, that's illustrated by that vertical line there, that John took the bus probability of L given B then. That means that this branch here would be the probability of John not being late for work given that he took the bus. And similarly, if we filled in these two, we're going to get these results here. The probability of John being late for work given that he didn't take the bus. And then we've got the probability of John not being late for work given that he didn't take the bus. So in this example then we've got to work out this probability here. Now we're given this fact here that the probability of taking a bus and being late for work is 0.6 and that is the result of going along the tree diagram through this path that John takes the bus and he is late for work given that he took the bus. And we write this final result through the tree diagram as the probability of taking the bus and then being late. And you'll notice I've used this symbol here. If you're using Venn diagrams or set notation, this symbol is pronounced the intersection. Although with tree diagrams, I tend to prefer the word and, okay? It's useful. So probability of taking the bus and being late. But as I say, you might see the word intersection being used, okay? I'll just write that in for you, intersection. Now we should know already how to work out something like this on a tree diagram. It's the result of multiplying these two probabilities together. So what we've got here is the probability then of going by bus, that's John going by bus and being late for work, is equal to the probability that John takes the bus multiplied by the probability that he's late for work given that he previously took the bus. And if we make the probability of L given B the subject, then we've got the probability of L given B is equal to the probability of B and L, or B intersected with L, divided by the probability of B. Now we know the probability of taking the bus 
and being late. We saw up here it was the probability of taking a bus and being late for work is 0.6. So clearly all we've got to do is just fill that in here. So we've got therefore the probability that John is late for work given that he took the bus is equal to 0.6 divided by the probability that he took the bus which we're told is 0.8. Work that out and you end up with 0.75. So hopefully very straightforward. But it really does depend on the fact that you use correct notation. Now what I want to show you is how I would go about problems like this in general, how I think about them. And in general, when I'm asked for the probability of one event occurring, given that another, generally the previous event, has occurred, then I think of it as equaling the probability that both events occur divided by the probability of the given event. Now you'll find this general statement written in textbooks and formula books as say the probability of one event, let's say we call it A, given that another event has occurred, we'll call it B, is equal to the probability that both occur, that is the probability of A and B occurring, divided by the probability of the given event, which will be the probability of B. And so this is a general result which I would certainly encourage you to learn. Now, that means that I could translate this across to this question. So, for instance then, let's just put note here. If we use that formula, then we could say the probability, for instance, that John is not late for work, given that he took the bus would be equal to the probability that both events occur and I can write that as not being late for work and that he took the bus or I'm going to turn it round because it seems to make more sense to me when we start from the mode of transport and then the arrival state as being the probability of B and not being late for work. So it doesn't matter which way round you put these, it's still going to be the same probability. But I feel for this kind of example, the bus would be, uh, or the mode of transport would be the best letter to start with first of all, as it occurs first in the tree diagram. And then this is divided by the probability of the given event, which would be the probability of taking the bus. Let's try another one. Suppose you're asked to work out the probability that John is not late for work given that he didn't take the bus. Then this would clearly be the probability of both events occurring. So again I could write it as not being late for work and not taking the bus. But I'm going to turn it round. Same probability though. Probability of not taking the bus and not being late for work divided by the probability of the given event, which is the probability of not taking the bus. Okay, well I hope that's given you some idea anyway on how to work out conditional probabilities. When you're asked to work out the probability of something occurring, given then that something else has occurred previously. I tend to like this definition, but some of you might be taught this, prefer to use this one. Both the same basically, but uh, leave it up to you to decide which style you want to work with. Okay?